This episode of The Travelling Epicurean was made possible by these sponsors. It's an Italian risotto ball that's usually stuffed with mozzarella and prosciutto. And today I'm going to stuff them with diced corned beef. It's your leftovers from St. Patrick's Day. And then I put a little twist on it with some cream cheese and jalapeno to give it that popper flavor. Do you ever remember having poppers years ago? Goodness gracious, those are so good. I used to love those stuffed jalapenos that were breaded and deep fried. They were really, really good. Anyway, so give it a little bit of flavor of that. And baked cream cheese always puffs up and it's gonna be even more creamy and decadent than it already is. And I'm gonna show you how to make some Thousand Island dressing. I make it with a Greek yogurt. So it's very refreshing and delicious. And I put a little uh, horseradish in there to go with the Reuben, to go with the corned beef. It's very delightful. In fact, it's out of this world. You're gonna love this, and I'm excited to show you how to make it. Before these. we get the ingredients for the Arancini Reuben balls, let's take a look at how I prepared the corned beef and that delicious risotto. I have the corned beef going here, and a lovely pot of bay leaves, sweet onions, carrots, celery, some peppercorns, and this is gonna simmer for a few hours so we can make our arancini Reuben balls. They're gonna be so good. Okay, we have it all going here. We're sauteing the three quarters cup of uh, sweet onion for the risotto. Once that's translucent, I'm gonna add in the arborio rice. I have my chicken stock and that's gonna be simmering. You need to add that in when it's super hot into the risotto. I'm going to add in a cup of arboreal rice, which is a starchy rice. And we're just going to stir this. I'm going to turn the heat up to medium. And it's going to saute for about three minutes until it starts to look a little bit chalky. And now we're going to add our wine. I love risotto. You know, you just have to follow certain steps and it's really easy to make. It absorbs at its own rate, so you can't rush that absorption. So once this white wine evaporates, I'm gonna start ladling in hot chicken stock into the risotto. I'm gonna stir it, and then with each addition, I'm just gonna keep waiting for it to absorb, and it'll end up disappearing from the bottom of the pan, then you know it's absorbed, and then I'll add in another layer. It makes the risotto nice and creamy. You know, it's a starchy rice, so it's gonna release starches, as well as absorbing all these wonderful liquids. So you have to give it time to do that. See in the bottom of the pan there? So now it's ready for another ladle. So now I'm gonna add the butter in the Parmesan. I'm just gonna pour it all in just like that. Wow, so delicious. All right, we're gonna let this Here's cool now. we're gonna need for arancini Reuben balls that we're gonna make. We have corned beef, risotto, mozzarella, Jarlsberg, sauteed and finely chopped jalapeno, couple of eggs and some seasoned breadcrumbs. So here we go, we're just going to start mixing up all of our ingredients. You know, I'm gonna keep some of this uh, plain without the jalapenos just in case my kids wanna try it. I've taken out about a third of the mixture and these are gonna be plain. And then I'm gonna add in those jalapenos and I'm gonna mix those so you in just wanna there. give it another mix you want to taste the mixture to make sure that you don't need to season it. I did add a quarter teaspoon of salt because it needed just a little bit. Wow, that is so good. I can't wait to start frying these. It's going to be really, really good. All right, and it's not going to be a deep fry. I only have about a half an inch in my cast iron pan. I really love that cast iron pan because it holds the heat. We don't need to have a cast iron pan. It's just what I like to do. So it's all like the seasoned breadcrumbs. It just gives it a little extra flavor. And I use, I think I use the seasoned breadcrumbs with everything. 
pretty much with everything, and my kids like it. So if it passes with them, I get to use it. If I want them to eat it, that is. All right, so here we go. Have our eggs. And then I'm gonna start making the balls after I whisk this. And then we're gonna get these on the stove. It's not gonna really take a long time to cook because all the ingredients are already cooked. It's just we're, we're warming it and heating the insides. So when we break them open, it's gonna be cheesy and ooey and gooey and delicious. Okay, so I find that an easy way to do this is with a little scooper. And then this way they're all the same. It's just like making meatballs. We're just gonna roll them up like this and then we're gonna put them on our plate here. So I'm just gonna go through all of these and I'm gonna keep them separate from the plain ones just in case my kids wanna try one and they want another. I'll have, I'll have a few for them. Okay, so I'm going to dip the plain ones first. And I'm going to dip it in the egg just so, you know, you don't need to saturate it in the egg. We're just getting a little bit of a coating. And then into the breadcrumbs, roll it around. The egg actually just helps to adhere the breadcrumbs up a tad bit more than if we were to use it without the egg. You could use it without the egg, but I think that you know, we're just going to put them on the plate right there. And I'm going to continue with all the plain ones here. Just a small coating. I roll it around gently. Put it in the breadcrumbs. And then we're going to get them all lined up. And I'm going to keep going through all of these. And then I'm going to go through all the jalapeno ones. And we'll get those on the plate too. I have my cast iron pan with about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch of vegetable oil and that's been heating up for about five ten minutes on low and then I just turn it up to a, like a, a medium medium high to get that right temperature here is our arancini reuben balls with a twist the ones on the right are the plain ones the ones on the left are the jalapeno ones. And then I have like a little platform here. I just have a cookie tray underneath there and I put down a few pieces of paper towel to suck up the oil. So I may be the sauce gal, but I'm also the eggplant gal too. And I've been frying for over 20 years. So when I fry, I don't check the temperature of the oil because I just kind of get a feel for that kind of thing, frying things for so many years. Um, I'm going to show you how it, I'm going to take the temperature right now. It's going to be around 350. The only time I use a temperature gauge is when I'm making candy because that's very particular on breaking points of um, when you have those certain temperatures in there. So it's, it's not too complicated. It's not a deep frying. We only have about a half an inch of oil here. You just kind of know the temperature. You can take a little bit of water and splash it in there. And if it bubbles a little bit, you know that it's good. If it goes crazy bubbling, then you know it's too hot and to turn it down a little bit. All right, so I have the temperature. It was actually a little bit too high because I was talking away over here, blah, blah, blah. So I took it off the heat just for about two minutes. I stirred it a little bit with a spatula and it came right down. So now it's on three, like 330, 340. And I'm gonna get these arancini balls right in there. So I'm just gonna place them, place them in there. See the little bubbles? And usually when you fry, it comes down to temperature a little bit once you start putting in whatever you're frying. And I'm gonna get all the plain ones done first. Be really careful because the oil is gonna splatter a little bit. These look absolutely delicious. And they're turning golden. I can't wait to take these out. So they're done and I'm gonna take them out now. And remember, you have to put them in the refrigerator just for a little bit to cool them before, before we fry them. They look gorgeous. And I'm gonna get our other ones right in there right now. Look how beautiful these are. 
So you can see how delicious. Look at the inside of that. Oh my goodness, is that amazing? <laughs> yes, it is. And I'm just gonna have to take a bite of that one. Mm. Oh my goodness. That's heavenly. Absolutely heavenly. All right, so let's make that Thousand Island dressing because those dunked in the Thousand Island dressing are going to be out of this world. They're light and scrumptious and they melt in your mouth. Look at that. So now we're going to put together that really delicious Thousand Island dressing with the Greek yogurt. It pretty much has all the things that you normally would put in a Thousand Island dressing, although I do use cornichons and I'm going to show you what those cornichons look like. They're a little extra tart and I think they make a great tartar sauce as well. So that should be one of your staples. You should always have cornichons in your refrigerator because you can use them with so many dips and spreads and sauces. Um, and now as for Greek yogurt goes, anytime you get a recipe that has mayonnaise in it, take out half that mayonnaise and replace it with Greek yogurt. You'll be so surprised on how delicious that is. It's gonna be refreshing, it's better for you, you're gonna really, really love it. You, you'll be excited about that. <laughs> I think you'll be excited about that. This is gonna be our fabulous Thousand Island dressing. We have mayonnaise, Greek yogurt, ketchup, freshly chopped chives and parsley. I have chopped up some cornichons. These are beautiful little cornichons which you should always have in your fridge. They make great tartar sauce. And then this is some sweet relish. I grated some sweet onion there. I have my rice wine vinegar that I love so much and the olive oil. I'm gonna whisk this all together. And magically, it's going to turn into incredible Thousand Island dressing. I like Tabasco, but I find myself using two dashes there. I find myself using sriracha. It's a little bit thicker. And boy, you know, it already has all those great flavors. It has the peppers and the spices. How could you go wrong? I'm gonna put in some horseradish. It's a cream style horseradish, so it's not straight horseradish. But this makes the Thousand Island dressing, boy, it just takes it to another level. So, I'm gonna say if I could get out of there, I'm gonna say it's about a teaspoon, maybe a heaping teaspoon. It gives it an underlying flavor. And you know what this is also really good with? It's also incredible with a cob salad with cold shrimp. It's well, here's our plate of arancini Reuben balls. Doesn't that look pretty? It's just amazing. I'm gonna take one of these here and I'm going to slice it in half and show you the inside of that. And then we're gonna dunk that. Oh my goodness, look how ooey and gooey that is. Just to die for. And then we're gonna dunk it in this sauce here and we're gonna take a bite of that. You can't get better than that. I can't wait for you to go make these. I'm double dipping, but I can do that because it is my sauce. <laughs> mm. So good. If you don't like these, I'm sorry, I just can't help you. Now you have something to do with your leftover corned beef from St. Patrick's Day. So, get to work. <laughs> wow, those I think are the most amazing risotto balls I have ever had. I can't wait for you to try these. Now you have something really creative and delicious to do with your leftover corned beef from St. Patrick's Day. You're gonna love these and that Thousand Island dressing is so tasty, you can have it with everything. Leave your comments down below, I'm dying to hear how you feel about this recipe too. The recipes are at the Traveling of
traveling Epicurean. Last week we did the five minute pie crust and I hope you all got that done and put it into your freezer because we are here today to bake that pie together. We're going to be doing a blueberry pie because blueberry is my favorite. I love all those bubbling juices coming through the pie crust and the aromas of the blueberries when we take it out of the oven. And we're going to decorate the top of the pie, not with lattice, but with this cute little maple leaf imprint that I bought at Williams-Sonoma. By the way, they're having a 70% off sale there. You should take advantage of this. I got all these cute little leaf cutters for only $5, such a deal. All right, so let me take you through what we're gonna need to get this pie going. This is what we're gonna need to make our blueberry pie today. I have four and a half cups of blueberries that I washed, dried, and sorted through to make sure there were no stems or overripe or underripe blueberries a fresh lemon, a half a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of cornstarch. I have some leaf cutters that will make the design of the top of the pie with. I have a marker, some kitchen scissors, a pie plate. I like using glass. And I have two pie crusts that are already prepared. You can look at our perfect pie crust in five minutes from last week if you need that recipe. And then parchment paper. This is kind of a secret of mine for rolling out the dough. Pie Pie and some sugar on here, a half a cup. Roll my lemon. Get the juices flowing in that. And then I'm gonna squeeze half a lemon on here, which is about a tablespoon. Make sure you don't get the seeds in there. That's why I'm cupping my hand. So it helps to catch the seeds. And then I'm going to just toss this. I'm gonna to put this in the fridge and then we're gonna start rolling out our pie crust. All right, that looks beautiful. Okay, into the fridge this goes. Okay, so this is my little trick for rolling out the dough. Look how pretty that dough is. See the little specks of the butter and the Crisco from when we made our pie crust um, last week. So I'm gonna take a marker and I'm going to draw the pie plate shape on the back of parchment paper. We're gonna roll out the pie crust in the middle of this parchment. It makes life so much easier you don't have to worry about it sticking to the counter, especially if you're new at, you know, rolling out pie crust dough. This makes your life really, really simple. You're gonna be so happy I taught you this little trick. All right, so the circles are on the outside. It's just to give you some kind of inclination of how big you need to roll this out. So I'm just gonna take some flour. You still need flour. And I'm gonna just sprinkle it in the middle there. I'll put some on the side. And then I'm gonna put the pie crust right on the flour. Just like that. I am going to put the other piece of parchment just right on top like that. Move everything out of my way so my roller has some room on the, on the sides here. And then I'm gonna to start to roll. I'm rolling from the middle out and I'm going to turn it and do the same thing on all four sides just like that then I'm going to lift off the top piece I'm going to flip it over I'm going to lift off the bottom piece brush that flower off there pull back roll forward so always from the center out pull back Roll forward, and I'm just gonna keep doing this. Flip it over. You always have to, you're releasing the um, parchment so it can roll again. And see, it's coming to the circle on this side, not so much on this side, so I'm gonna concentrate on going from the center here. And I feel like you're not manhandling. Remember, we don't wanna manhandle the dough because that makes for a tough dough. You wanna be gentle to the dough, not touch it as much, not push down really hard when you go to put it in the pie plate. It keeps it really tender. All right, that looks fantastic. Just like that. Now, 
the reason I really like this too is because we are going to use the parchment to help us get it into the pie plate. I'm going to put the dish down. I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to put my hand on top and I'm just going to flip it over just like that. Isn't that beautiful? To be mended together, it's very simple. Don't push hard into the pie plate because that makes for a tough dough. All we're doing is just placing it into the pie dish, okay? That's all. And then if we have a little extra space, we could rip and tear and then mend it just like that. And that looks beautiful. I'm gonna put this into the refrigerator. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then we're gonna start to roll out the top portion and make all those little leaves that we're gonna place on top of the blueberry pie. This is so gosh darn cute, I can't stand it. Oh my gosh. What a great little invention. Okay, so. We're pushing down, and what this little center knob does is it puts the imprint of the vein on the leaf. But then you really have to just wiggle a little bit because you have to get through the pie crust. And then it's gonna come out like this. And then you're gonna take the spring and you're gonna push, and it's gonna help to pop it out like that. Keep going, I'm gonna go through all of this dough here. Wiggle a little bit. And that one just came right out. Beautiful. And I'm gonna start to put them on, a, on my tray here. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour. And then I'll just start to lay down all of our beautiful maple leaves. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to put these on the pie. So look, I have 17 cut out. I'm gonna do a couple extra just in case. I think 17 is probably gonna be more than enough. So I'm gathering up all this dough, put it back into a ball, into a disc, like this. A little flour back down, because it's getting a little bit warm, you know, when you start to work with it. And make sure you have the right side. And then we're just gonna roll this out quickly. And look at this gorgeous tray. I'm gonna put this tray into the refrigerator, get the blueberries out, we'll put them in the pie crust, and then we'll start placing our, um, our maple leaves on the top of our blueberry pie. Okay, look, I have this in the refrigerator, and it's not stuck. We don't want it pressed hard against the glass. We want this to stay tender. I'm just gonna, I don't have a lot of excess dough, so I'm just gonna tuck it under because then we're gonna make a little scallop edge with our knuckles here. So I'm gonna show you how I'm just tucking it under. So I'm gonna take my knuckle and I'm gonna just, I like to use my thumb and my knuckle. You can use your two knuckles just like this. And I'll show it to you. See how that beautiful scalloped edge there? I like it a little bit pronounced. And then I flatten it out a little bit. All right, isn't that pretty? And like I said, it's very forgiving. If you see a spot you wanna redo, just go right on over it. This is really beautiful. I love how that came out. All right, and I'm gonna put the blueberries right in there. And then I'm gonna put this back into the refrigerator while we mix some egg and heavy cream, we're going to paint the top of our leaves. And then I'll pull this back out because we're gonna to start to make the top of our, of our pie with all those leaves. All right, so I have an egg yolk and a tablespoon of heavy cream. We're gonna brush this on our leaves and it's really gonna to help to make it beautifully golden in the oven, and then we'll sprinkle some sugar on it at the very end. Okay, so I'm gonna brush this on now. So cute. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take a leaf, and I'm just going to lay it down. I'm actually going to put the edge of the leaf, and I'm going to 
adhere it to the edge of the pie crust. And then just take another leaf. It doesn't matter how you arrange it because it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Right? Um, oh, and you know what else I really wanted to do is I have some butter. And before we get too closely tied up here, I have about a tablespoon and a half. And I'm just going to tuck some butter pieces in there. I almost forgot about the butter. Butter makes everything taste great, right? <laughs> Especially sauces. So this just gives it that little extra flavor. We are almost done here. And I'm not going in any order, as you can see. You know, actually I'm going to grab a little thicker one here. And that's what's great about doing some extras, because then you can get a little bit picky and choosy. Right? And then I'll put one more here. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful that pie is. Really pretty. I'm gonna put this into the refrigerator for 15 minutes while I preheat the oven, and then we're gonna pop this gorgeous blueberry pie into that oven. Wow. Okay, look, so I'm gonna take the four leaves that I have left, I'm going to leave them on the parchment like this. I'm going to put them into a Ziploc, just like that. And who's better than me? I'm going to put these in the freezer. This way I have these cute little leaves I can put on something when I'm baking. And they're already done. I'll just take them right out of the freezer and use them. We did an amazing job. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the sugar, just ordinary sugar, right on top of our leaves that we place on top of this pie. Really pretty. I'm putting it on a cookie sheet. Same cookie sheet that we use on parchment also because those juices may bubble over a little bit. Instead of going in the bottom of your oven, they'll go on the cookie tray. Easy cleanup. All right, into the oven. I love the definition of the edges because we brushed it with the egg and the heavy cream. Just came out really beautiful. have our ice cream here. I'm really happy with the texture of the blueberries there. I'm gonna put a little scoop right next to the pie there. Okay, so I feel like I have died and gone to pie heaven. This is really, really good. Mmm. This is one heck of a blueberry pie. You're going to love this pie. I just have to say, this is one of the best blueberry pies I have ever had. I can't wait for you to make the pie. The perfect pie crust in five minutes. Make it just like we did tonight. I gave you that little trick to roll it out. That really helps. Wait till you try it. And all of the ingredients, you'll find this on my website at thetravelingepicurean.com. I can't wait for you to make this blueberry pie. Let me know how it turns out. Have a really great weekend. Ciao! Hi hey guys, Michelle here with the Traveling Epicurean. I am back. Uh, <laughs> I actually bought these <laughs> somewhere. I'm going over here and I'm going to take a really little thing that you got this from a bakery. You're going to just be. be <laughs> Thank you for watching the Traveling Epicurean.